All right, folks, the Hope Global Forums here in Atlanta yesterday held a panel discussion hosted by, you just saw it, WNBA President Lisa Borders. And after the conversation, I had a chance to talk with her about her first year as WNBA President. Take a listen. All right, Lisa, first year under your belt uh, as President of the WNBA. How was it? It was fantastic. It was our 20th year, a historic season. And even though we are less than a generation old, the traction that we've been able to get has been substantial. There are 12 teams all across the country, 144 of the best athletes in the world. We captured a sixth gold medal last year at the Olympics. So it was a year marked with amazing milestones. Uh, and obviously, I mean, this is different than what you've done in the past. It is different, but it's very much the same. Every role I've ever had the opportunity to lead and to participate, it's been helping those who were disenfranchised. So if you think back, this is women. Women are not receiving the same pay as men are. Women are not always able to have a career in professional sports. If you go back to my Grady days, it was those who were disenfranchised and didn't have adequate health care. In public service, it was those whose voices were not clearly heard or who were not at the table. So actually there's a theme to my career, even though I've had the privilege of working in all three sectors, public, private, and nonprofit, I am always seeking to help those who cannot help themselves or who haven't reached their full potential. Uh, you also though had to deal with uh, a tough test early on, uh, dealing with uh, 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 protesters and Black Lives Matter and t-shirts as well. And so, so talk about what leagues now have to contend with by having a new generation of athletes uh, who are very much, who are social, social media savvy, who are very much about uh, uh, social activism and they want that to be a part of their job as athletes. Right, Roland, you make a great point. Our league was the first team sport to actually deal with a social issue. We can think back to Muhammad Ali, but he was an individual person in boxing and he expressed his views on the Vietnam War and they took his belt. He was a champion at the time. These athletes are no different. They have better tools at their disposal. So social media allows for the democratization of voices. They get to speak on any and every topic that they deem appropriate. So we recognize that our athletes play basketball. They play it incredibly well. That's what they do. That's not who they are. Who they are is folks who want to contribute to the community beyond the professional work that they do. So I see this younger generation as one who is completely engaged in their community. They go to work every day like you and I, and that happens to be the hardwood in the different arenas around the country. But they are equally impacted and have opinions about what's going on in the world around them. So we celebrate our athletes and their desire to participate fully in America. Uh, one of the things that we talk about um, uh, the future, uh, that was a lot. There were a lot of people who watch uh, Connecticut play Mississippi State. Right. Lots of discussion on social media. And then, of course, they have the championship game. How do you take the WNBA and go to the next level uh, where you really get sports fans, period, not just young women, not just adult women, to say, look, these are professional athletes. Uh, you should be just as excited watching their game as watching men play. Right. So that's a great question. As we watched Mississippi State play UConn, that was an upset. So in sports, people are always looking for the unpredictable. That's exciting. That gets your adrenaline going. The same thing is true when South Carolina played Mississippi State. People wanted to see, could Mississippi State maintain that momentum. Clearly South Carolina tipped the scales and won. That team was and is led by Don Staley, one of the most decorated former WNBA players in history. So what we think we need to do is greater connect the college game with the professional game. People who are sports fans, but people who love basketball specifically. And if you look at the ratings for that night, Roland, Friday night, that game was up against our Warriors who were playing other professional leagues 
and they outpaced them on that night. The same thing was true with the finals game on Sunday. The final game of the women's final four outpaced opening day for the Chicago Cubs. These are facts. So it clearly demonstrates that people are paying attention. The college game, we believe, is one of the tipping points for women's basketball. So we recognize that our talent pool, the source of our talent, comes from the college game. There should be a really good connection between college and professional. So we are targeting young people girls and boys, young women and young men to be sports fans and basketball sports fans first among equals. All right, cool. All right, it's good to see you. Thanks so much. Great to be here. I want everybody to come out and watch us as we tip off on May the 13th. I want you to be there, too. Well, I, I'm waiting for a franchise to come back to Houston. <laughs> Only the most decorated franchise in WNBA history. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to be with you. I appreciate it. That's right. Always representing the Houston. Houston Commons, of course, won four WNBA championships. Uh, they were definitely uh, uh, the uh, the best team ever uh, in the league. Uh, what about that, though? Because it's very interesting to me. You saw, as I said, asked her. You saw all of this talk, all of these folks who were watching the women's final four in college, uh, but you still have this attitude that folks don't want to watch women's basketball. I think it is, we're seeing this through all of what's going on in current news. Women are still not quite receiving the level of respect. They're not considered as athletes in the same way. They're not paid the same amount. And it is one of those things that I think is just built in the American system. It's going to be hard to get around. Vin, go ahead. Let me keep it 100. I had not been to a WNBA game until about two years ago. Right. And I was skeptical. When I went, I went because of my job. And so I went out there. So and why were you skeptical? I was skeptical because I never experienced... Uh, the, the level of athleticism that the WNBA can offer. I've never experienced it up close, okay? So I wasn't a big basketball guy, period. Definitely not a big WNBA guy. When I went there, it was the most fun I had in years. And the athleticism of these women, remarkable. They played the hearts out. So I'm a fan now. So now I actually go to the games. But it took me having that one-time experience. Viva, you a WNBA fan? Actually, I played basketball in high school. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I you loved were basketball. <laughs> I was. What position you played? I was a... Actually, I was on defense, and that was oh, way back specialist? in the day. Oh, yes. She, she specialized way in blocking. Way back in the day. <laughs> so, so, so you absolutely are, uh, are telling folks they should check out the WNBA. Absolutely, but you know what? You know, we're slow to things. But like tennis has turned around because of those dynamic women in tennis, basketball is coming. Okay. All right, then. They've been trying to be a hooper. All right, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air, and you still get shot by the cops. Oh, my God. Please don't tell me he's dead. We're not going to let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. <laughs> we will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.